Hi, welcome back to my, my quilt studio. Today we're going to be talking about the temperature of color and what happens um, based on that temperature. So last, uh, the first lesson when we, t we looked at our color wheel, we were talking a little bit about the temperature of color and how we, there, some colors are considered cool at colors and some colors are considered warm colors. And basically we have our color wheel and we have colors, anything that's associated with the sun or fire is considered a warm color. It tends to be a very vivid color and a very active color and it tends to be to be aggressive and come out at you in something and you can almost see that on my color wheel. Any of these colors that have anything to do with red, orange, and yellow seem to really pop off the black. On the opposite side of the color wheel we have what are called cool colors and these colors are very calming and soothing and they're associated with water and the sky and ice and so anything that contains blue um, or any amount of blue would be considered a cool color and would be more of a receding color. Now it's important that we understand how these colors, you know, how we can use these colors then. If we have colors that naturally recede, we wouldn't want to put those colors in a place that we would want something to really pop out as opposed to something that, that we would want to um, pop out. We obviously wouldn't want to use a color that would naturally recede. So you can see how we can, we can use these colors purposely then. Alright, it turns out right through the middle of our color wheel we have a line that sort of uh, divides these colors and it actually goes through the red violet and through the um, yellow green okay and what that means is sometimes these colors based on how much color they have on in them could be considered either a cool color or a warm color so a red violet that would contain more red than blue would be considered a warm color and a red violet that would contain more blue than red would be considered a cool color and the same goes on this side here's the yellow green if it has more yellow in it than green it's considered a uh, warm color and if it has more blue in it than green then it would be considered a cool color okay so these are the tricky ones um, that are sometimes hard to discern whether they're really cool or warm um, so, um, we, you know, it's easy for me to tell you about these things, but it's another thing uh, when you get to use them yourself. Here is an example, basically, of um, two squares on a square, okay, and we have both warm and cool colors on both. Here we have the warm red and the, the cool square sitting on top of the warm red, and here we have a cool blue sitting, on, uh, sorry, a warm red sitting on top of a cool blue. All right, and what appears to happen? On one, it looks more like a square that sits on top of the other square, and on another, it almost looks as though it's a hole that you could actually put your hand through. And that's the tricky, the fun, magical thing that basically happens with, um, with using warm and cool colors. So in this one, Basically, we have a square and a square, and it looks almost as though, because of these, the way these colors are working, that I could almost put my hand through that hole. It appears to be receding on top of this red. And in this one, we have the opposite happening. We have this cool blue and this red that's sitting, that's very active and sitting on top of this receding blue. So the blue almost seems to be pushing the square forward and we actually get a better, uh, you know, it looks like a square sitting on a square instead of a hole. All right, so now today for your, um, your lesson um, in your PDF, you're going to get a uh, photograph here of a window and this is a southwest window because I live in the southwest you can actually do anything you want with the facade of the building and make it a building in your area but what we're really interested in is the window and in you're going to do two pieces and I've actually done all the work for you here in the line drawing so you're going to have a line drawing like this and you're going to take this line drawing and blow it up to about a 12 by 12 and then you're going to do two pieces and the idea is in one we want to have a warm color behind the window and in another we want to have a cool color behind the window. 
Okay, so we want to see the difference in what happens with that window um, when we put a cool color behind it and a warm color behind it. And um, it's just something to see for yourself to see how these colors, warm and cool, actually work. And then uh, join me next time because we'll have uh, lesson four and we're going to be talking about fabulous color com combinations right from the color wheel.